Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ila, and I am from the Consumer and Investor Office at the Securities Commission, Malaysia. Welcome to today's InvestMart online series webinar. Today's webinar is on investing with a Sherry compliant equity crowdfunding. First of all, we would like to thank you for taking the time to be here today. Next. We are pleased to have with us today, Mr. Wan Dazrik from Yetis Malaysia to present on the topic, investing with the Sherry compliant equity crowdfunding. Allow me to share a brief background on Mr. Dazrik. Juan Desrick is the CEO of the Ethis Malaysia, an Islamic fintech startup with a regional presence that aims to uplift humanity through financial technology. Ethis is a share compliant equity crowdfunding platform provider that is recognized by the SC. Desrick has a vast experience in the areas of organization and large scale transformation initiative, as well as startup ventures building initiatives, given the various roles he has undertaken professionally. He has experience in areas of corporate entrepreneurship and innovation-led transformation initiatives that includes multi-stakeholders' interests. Desrick also is involved in startup ecosystem building's efforts as he forges multi-stakeholders' uh, multi uh, collaboration for the entrepreneurship-related sectors and relevant startup innovation capabilities in key industries. Beyond entrepreneurship, his expertise lies in the areas of transformation and growth, as well as change management, given his previous work in large-scale transformation project with various multinationals and GLCs of Malaysia. Now, please stay tuned till the end of the session, for we will be having the, a short Q&A session followed by the pop quiz session. Next slide. Please do follow us on our social media platform for useful information on investing and latest updates on our initiatives. Now, I will pass over to Mr. Dazrik to share his presentation, Investing with the Share Compliant Equity Crowdfunding. Over to you, Mr. Dazrik. Thank you very much, Sheila. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to, to everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I, I'd like to uh, send my, my thank you for, for, from, for Security Commission and the team who's, who's working on the investment um, to, to invite me today to speak about the, the equity crowdfunding, um, but specifically on equity crowdfunding, um, Sharia compliant uh, platform. Um, I would share some slides if that's okay. So I'll start sharing my. Okay, uh, I'll make a start. So basically, um, I'll go through what ITC is and, and, and what we do in, in Malaysia or in, in fact in the fintech space. But, but for uh, most of you have uh, your, your phones with you uh, or rather uh, you have a web browser with you, maybe if I could start off by knowing you a little bit, uh, just, just this one time, just to understand uh, where you're from and what you want to do. Sorry, uh, what you want to know from today. I've got a very uh, generic content, but also I wanted to play to the, to the, to the, to the demographic of the audience here. So if you could, um, you can do two ways. One, perhaps you could do your QR code here. Uh, sorry, just scan the QR code and then uh, I'll, I'll get some, some inputs from you. There's actually two questions from there. Or, or alternatively, you can go to menti.com and, and, and type this code number uh, 5181. 3682. Uh, I repeat, 51813682, or you can go through this um, um, QR code. Uh, I leave this QR code in the next subsequent slide, but, but what, what, what essentially will happen uh, is that I will actually get your uh, inputs here. So, so this is real time, I guess, as you guys are uh, inputting this, uh, and I can see in terms of what demographics you are from and, and what you would like to know from today. So Alhamdulillah, I see, you know, that's, that's part of you investors. Some of you are general public. Just want to know about uh, equity crowdfunding. Uh, and, and, and I guess portion of you are in the fintech ecosystem. So that's, that's, that's great to know. Um, just moving on from today, uh, what you guys would like to know on, and I guess this is still continuing to, to be populated. Uh, most of you would like to know more about crowdfunding. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a common team around return and risk and uh, investment, investment plan, technologies and all sorts. Continue on to do that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll capture some of this point and I think I'll articulate some of this point during the Q&A um, session as well. Um, yeah, so crowdfunding, investment, risk, returns. So that's, that seems to be the, the, the key terminology or common theme of today. 
Okay, uh, you guys can still see my slide screen, I hope. Um, I'll just give a quick intro in terms of what we do. Sorry, uh, sorry your, your slides, uh, your screen was um, not shared. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is, this is toggling around. Oh, sorry, yes, apologies, I didn't see that. Okay, uh, you can see my screen now? Yep, yep, can see. Okay, perfect. So, so, so just broadly speaking, I'll just, you know, uh, quickly go through this. Um, like, like what Ila mentioned earlier, I think, I think our, we are pretty much a fintech uh, company. Um, in Malaysia, we, we actually uh, uh, recognize a market operator to, to, to do equity crowdfunding. Uh, there's actually 10 players in the equity crowdfunding space so far, and we're actually one of them. Uh, and, and, and we are the, the, the first one that are Sharia compliant in that regard. And I'll let you know what that means um, um, later. But our mission and vision is very clear. I think this is what uh, Ila was, 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 was alluding to earlier. So, so we are in the game of uh, circulating of capital. And capital here with regards to investments or investments opportunity. Um, depending on which stakeholder lens you're, you're using, if you're an investor, it's pretty much an investment play. Uh, but if you're in the business segment, business owners, issuers, and stuff, that is pretty much a, a fun uh, raising play. Uh, raising play. Um, so we believe. In the in the creating an impactful circulation of capital, in the investment of fundraising um, to the economy. Thing that that is actually uh, booming, and I'll, I'll share some stats from the Security Commission as well uh, in terms of what's the landscape look like. Uh, how does this impact you in terms of your investment diversification portfolios, uh, or, or, or from a business standpoint, uh, fundraising opportunities as you go to scale, um, specifically in the Malaysian landscape. Um, before that, just a brief introduction again about Ethis, where we originate from and, and how we got here into this space. Uh, we started in early 2015 um, uh, in Singapore, but, 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 but alhamdulillah, over time, over the next couple of years, up until 2018, uh, a lot of our traction actually was in, in, in Indonesia, uh, in the loan base or P2P, uh, crowdfunding, and I'll illustrate that later in a subsequent slide. And 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 as of late last year, in 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 2020, um, alhamdulillah, again we've we've got uh, the 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 license from the Security Commission to operate in the equity crowdfunding uh, space. And this is something that I wanted to focus a bit uh, for the for the audience today. And I think based on the inputs that you share, a lot of you wanted to know more about crowdfunding, uh, also the investment opportunities in the crowdfunding space. Uh, you can actually get this information, whether it's through the Security Commission website, uh, se.com, not mine. Um, also, you might see some of the of the articles that have been published in the mainstream media. Uh, what essentially it means over the last three or four years, uh, the crowdfunding space, whether it's P2P or equity, uh, is actually booming. And, 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 and in, as a matter of fact, uh, in 2020, the, the, the take-up rate or rather the growth rate for the equity crowdfunding space or crowdfunding space specifically have, 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 have risen to, to, to 43%. Um, and we see this momentum continuously growing. Um, even though we're in Malaysia, we're going through lockdown, um, the COVID-19 period for the most of 2020, uh, there still seem a good trajectory in terms of uh, crowdfunding, in terms of uh, crowdfunding as a means or rather alternative means to fundraise or to invest. 
and and this is what I wanted to allude to earlier. So so this is actually coming up from the Security Commission report in 2020. Um, if you see the conventional of fundraising uh, from corporate bonds, from uh, IPOs and VCs and PEs, um, the trajectory seems to slow it, have slowed down a bit. Uh, but but what interesting to see in the ECF P2P uh, financing space, it has risen to what I've mentioned earlier, 43%. Um, I wouldn't want it to illustrate or, or deep dive into all these slides, but if you see, there's a lot of prospect in terms of uh, investment opportunities or fundraising opportunities in the crowdfunding space. And this is likely to continue for 2021. Um, and, and we've seen, uh, in spite of the downturn of the economy, uh, in spite of the prolonged lockdown period, uh, alternative financing through crowdfunding is actually a, 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 a you know, a good way of, of, of diversifying portfolios if you view from an investor's lens. Okay, um, I have alluded this earlier and I didn't want to drain so much on this. So we are actually a Sharia compliant uh, equity crowdfunding uh, platform uh, recognized and approved by security commissions. Um, I suggest uh, you, if you are looking to crowdfund, whether it's uh, loan-based, P2P or equity-based uh, in the, what we do, um, do check the, the, the security commission's website. There's only few recognized uh, players out there. Um, I've mentioned earlier, Ethis is actually one out of the 10. Uh, there's only 10 in Malaysia so far. And we are regulated. Uh, we are actually um, regulated under security commissions. And this is to ensure, you know, compliance. There's no, uh, you know, scam. There's no misrepresentation for both issuers and investors. And, and we are adhered to, to, to all the compliance and regulations uh, that, that is, that is uh, imposed by the security commission. Um, broadly speaking, what Ethics Malaysia do, uh, sorry, Ethics do, we, uh, aside from investment, um, in, in Indonesia, I've alluded to earlier, we have a license to SE equivalent in Indonesia, uh, OJK, who provided a loan base or P2P base uh, offering for, for our, I guess, sister brand in, in Ethis, Indonesia. Uh, in Malaysia, we have a, a charity digital platform that's called Global Sedekah. So charity here is not investment per se, it's pretty much donation. Um, so this is what we mean, you know, when we go into fintech offering, uh, beyond investment, beyond loans, we also do um, charity. So, so, so Global Sedekah, if you want to Google, Google that, uh, it's, it's another charity-based uh, platform that, that, that we actually uh, promote to stakeholders. Um, yeah, so, so uh, uh, aside from the, the current offerings, we are actually, you know, uh, looking into developing uh, ancillary fintech offerings. Uh, what that means, uh, we started to look into robo-advisors, uh, investment management, and to some extent also uh, exploring uh, opportunities around getting digital bank uh, license uh, in, in the next couple of uh, months or years to come. So, so there's, there's a lot of offerings that, that at this uh, uh, are looking at in terms of uh, serving the greater community uh, beyond beyond what it is now. And of course, we are legal and Sharia compliant. So aside from the Security Commission uh, regulation that we need to adhere to, uh, we are also um, very much uh, accountable or responsible with, with, with regards to Sharia matters. And alhamdulillah, we were also uh, in a good relation with ISRA and also um, a Sharia consultant and legal advisors in, in that respect. So just to share a bit, you know, if you're an investor, if you are a business owner and stuff like that, you know, what are you actually looking at um, when, when, when we're talking about scale of SDGs beyond profit and returns and stuff like that? Just to share you some stats, uh, and this is what we're trying to emulate in, in Malaysia, uh, just based on what we have done successfully in Indonesia uh, with regards to social housing. Uh, Alhamdulillah, so far we have actually crowdfunded uh, close to 2,000 investments uh, in Indonesia and currently looking into Malaysia uh, from investors across 47 countries. What that means in terms of numbers and figures, we're looking at 13 million uh, bridging fund. Uh, that we have successfully helped, um, you know, business um, to, to, to create 9,700 houses that impacted um, about 39,000 people. And this is predominantly in Indonesia. And this is what we're, some, we're trying to emulate in Malaysia. This is something that is brewing 
Um, so if you are investing or looking to investing in the property space, uh, specifically social housing space, this is something that is big uh, that the artists are planning to, to take on uh, in the next months or years to come. I wouldn't drain on this slide. So this is pretty much an ecosystem play. Um, what we do beyond the equity crowdfunding space, uh, we are also uh, one way or another trying to advocate or promote the fintech ecosystem uh, or rather the Islamic, uh, you know, fintech product ecosystem as well. Uh, and, and we have done this over time um, from 2015. And, and inshallah, it's, it's, it's still going to continue um, to do that uh, for the next or many months to come. And also, we don't do this alone, you know, coming up from a startup and we're currently in the scale up um, um, state. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we've got a lot of collaborative partners uh, from similar industries, fintech industry organizations. Um, Security Commission has been a, a good alliance to us uh, as, as the ecosystem is growing. Uh, we also do share inputs, insights, data points to see how we could actually uh, grow this space as well. And obviously, the banks, the, the, the organizations, the, the associations who, who also do provide from time to time, feedback and input and, and areas of collaboration as we grow uh, the, the, the fintech space. Okay, um, I'll, I'll run through the next couple of 10 minutes or so, the next couple of slides on, on what actually crowdfunding is. I assume most of you have, have come across this term or pretty much aware of this term, uh, but fundamentally, it is actually an, an online platform. Uh, that connects investors to businesses um, who are looking to do fundraising or investment that mutually benefit each other. Um, at this Malaysia, our slight different differentiator is actually uh, the Sharia compliant. Um, and I've mentioned earlier, you know, uh, aside from security commission regulation, uh, we also abide to the principle of Islamic finance uh, or, or Sharia. And this is something that I think it's, it's, it's worth illustrating um, in terms of what do we mean by Sharia uh, compliant or Islamic finance uh, philosophy, uh, broadly speaking. Um, and then this is what I've mentioned earlier. When we say about Islamic finance, Sharia compliant, it's really about the, the, the principle of being equitable and fair. And equitable and fair here with regards to the stakeholders that are primarily involved in the transaction, which is the business owner. Uh, which is usually the issuer, if you're looking in, in, a, in a giving equity uh, lens. Um, secondly, the financier, uh, which means the investor. So both of the issuer and investor uh, already have a lock-in target, so to speak, and they agree on the, 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 the profit sharing ratio. So returns obviously fluctuate over time, and we speak about risks and rewards, uh, business performance and profitability. What that means for both issuer and investor, um, you know, exceptional cases of negligence, fraud, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, both actually share the burden together. Um, and, and this is taking from a layman's standpoint, right? If you look into the conventional loan, um, so to speak, typically the investors or rather the, the, the financial has a, a slightly advantage in terms of, uh, you know, getting that return. Uh, regardless of the conditions of the borrower's performance. And this is something that, that, that we don't propagate in, in Islamic finance. Uh, but over time, we realize this actually uh, benefiting the, the stakeholders broadly when we speak about Musharraka, uh, when we speak about Islamic finance, being Sharia compliant and, 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 and of sorts. Um, currently in Malaysia, and this is from, from an investor's lens, if you are looking into these four uh, areas, uh, this is something that Atis Malaysia are currently put forward or, or being aggressive about. I've spoken a bit about the property landscape, specifically on the social housing. Um, times are hard. Uh, property landscape is hard. But, but when we speak about social housing, this is trying to innovate the landscape of, uh, of, of property investment. Uh, and, and, and inshallah, over, over the next couple of months or towards the end of the year, this is something that we're going uh, a bit more aggressive in the market. Agriculture sector is, is something that, that we are also pushing uh, with regards to fundraising and investment opportunities. Um, if you see in our platform, which I could share later, atis.co uh, forward slash my, uh, you can see some of the campaigns 
are actually geared in the agriculture space, uh, whether it's about employability, whether it's about harvesting, livestock, um, embedding IOTs into farming, agriculture. Um, that is something that, 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 that the public campaigns that we're helping to fundraise at this point of time. Um, thirdly, a lot of the RMOs or crowdfunding space are in this place uh, with regards to SME startups and MSME. Um, and they are what I consider as the, 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 the common players since, since a crowdfunding comes into play uh, four or five years ago. Naturally, because you know, uh, it's an alternative financing. If you're a small business operator, you look to fundraise, crowdfunding gives you that alternative uh, aside from banking. Um, and then the fourth one is something specific to, to ethics at this point of time. Uh, when you speak about social financing, you know, how do we bridge the donation, uh, the goodwill and also the investment um, into, into one and, and amplify for the greater good. And this is something that we're, we're still um, looking to explore uh, in the next couple of months, inshallah. I think most of you are aware of this, and I didn't want to drain on this so much. Uh, but typically in the Malaysian landscape, uh, when we speak about ECF or, or crowdfunding uh, per se, or investments broadly, there's are three types of uh, investors, so to speak. Uh, the first one is retail investors. Uh, we call it retail because it's, it's, uh, it's like a shopping. <laughs> uh, investors who are looking to double into investments, looking into you know, what kind of portfolios, uh, what kind of industries, tech, and so forth are, are dabbling into um, small type of investments uh, are usually uh, are retail investors. Uh, typically, you're looking about no more than 5,000K to, to, to invest, sorry, 5,000 ringgit to invest in a specific uh, business. Um, and, and, and this segment of investors are booming in, in Malaysia. Uh, there's, there's a big segment of uh, retail investors, and, and, and over time, I think they will grow. And I guess this is where the opportunity of investments uh, gradually pick up. Uh, also, we, and, and this, this type of investors are, are playing more to the businesses of micro startups uh, who are looking to scale. Um, second portion, I think a lot of us commonly know, so the angel investors, um, the slightly more bigger ticket item. This is uh, a, a criteria, so to speak, that's been defined in Malaysia. Uh, uh, annual total income of around or slightly more than 180,000K or a household of more uh, or, or no more than 250K for a period of year. Uh, they technically would actually invest more um, and, and the type of appetite of, of angel investors are, are looking for business issuers who are in the micro, small, medium enterprises who are looking to scale. Um, and obviously, if you're in the startup space, uh, you're looking to do series of funding, you'll probably be a bit more familiar with the VCs and PEs uh, out there. And this is what we consider as uh, accredited and sophisticated um, investors or institutional investors um, to, to some extent. So these are just the three common um, types of, of, of investors that, that are in the market. There is in the market uh, or specifically in Malaysia. Okay, very briefly, um, and I'm almost towards the end of, of, of my sharing, but I'm just going to focus down a bit with regards to crowdfunding, what is essentially it means, and, and how does that look like if you are a business owner uh, to go into issuance campaign, and, and if you are an investor, uh, how does this actually uh, you know, uh, affect you and, and what kind of considerations you're looking at? Um, so it, it, through a crowdfunding campaign, um, entrepreneurs typically make a limited time offer for their equity, uh, right? So once the, the exercise is completed, the investors become a shareholder of your entity, of that company's entity. Uh, and obviously, there's, 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 there will be associated with rights and benefits, risk and rewards and, and, and stuff like that. The next couple of slides is not exclusively for Ethics Malaysia. This is actually implied by security commissions to all the RMO, uh, the recognized market operators. If you are a company who are looking to fundraise through equity crowdfunding, um, you have to be a Malaysian registered company, whether it's Sinirem Berhad, private limited, unlisted, or LLP. 
the second criteria is that your paid up capital cannot be more than RM10 million uh, ringgit for you to be able to crowdfund into the public campaigns or crowdfunding campaigns. Now, if you have an audited account, uh, as of March 2021, um, Security Commission have actually allowed you to raise uh, or fundraise up to RM20 million. And this has actually grown over time. When we first started, it was 5 million. Uh, in 2020, it was 10 million. Uh, and, and, and the latest news that we've got so far is actually 20 million. But if you don't have any audited accounts, you are relatively new, uh, and this is play more to the startup space, um, you can fundraise still, but only up to half a million. So these are the two demarcation of uh, criteria depending on what stage of business you are at. Um, if you're looking to fundraise in the ECF, um, uh, this would be the, the criteria you'll be looking at. Again, I re-emphasize this is not exclusively to ethics. Um, it's also implied to nine other uh, crowdfunding platform operators in the equity crowdfunding space. Um, I wouldn't drain on this slide so much. So what typically what happens is actually when you appoint uh, an ECF operator, in this case, ATIS, uh, will do a due diligence process. Um, due diligence here is to ensure that you comply to the security commissions. On ATIS part, uh, on top of that, we also do uh, what I consider as buyers beware uh, due diligence. Uh, we do have an investment committee that also looks into Sharia compliance, uh, investment appetites, uh, and, 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 and risks and rewards before we proceed to do the uh, public campaign. Um, between the due diligence and public campaign, we also, to some extent, do advise in terms of the pre-marketing activities, you know, the duration of the campaign, when should we launch the campaign, uh, how's the narrative going to look like, is there any kind of improvement that needs to be made to your pitch deck uh, or, or any sort of documentations and, 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 and publication that goes out to, to investors before uh, we launch the public campaign? Typically, public campaign runs between two weeks to three months, 15 to 90 days, depending on the amount that you're looking to raise, depending on what kind of business you do, and depending on what type of investors are uh, probably uh, hooked to you to, to your businesses. Uh, this is something we actually also uh, would be able to advise, but ultimately the business owners or the issuer would, 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 would decide in terms of how long the campaign duration and, and the quantum of amount. Um, um, while we note that a lot of the post-campaign activities in terms of updating back to issuers, investors, lies in the business owners, uh, from time to time, we do also uh, help updating our pool of investors uh, and, 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 and help coordinate that effort uh, for our issuers. So typically, we we'll, um, after two weeks or 30 days, uh, we, we do provide update from uh, at this standpoint to, to the investors who have invested in the uh, campaigns. Okay, fairly quickly, um, I don't want to, <laughs> to, to, to go on this so much, but I think a lot of you probably have understood if it's a Sharia compliant, a lot of things that, 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 that we don't actually condone when we speak about Islamic finance is, is, is the concept of riba or interest rate of uh, interest based on loans or debt. What that means is that when we go through crowdfunding platform, again, this is exclusively to ethics. Uh, we can't do preference share just because of, 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 of this concept. What we have actually do work out a mechanism of what I consider as a, a, a target or defined uh, profit ratio uh, for investors as well as issuers. Um, commonly in ethics, this is the two type of, of, of um, uh, mechanism that we subscribe. Uh, one is what we consider as uni unilateral promise ordinary shares. Fundamentally, what that means is actually before an investor or business uh, agree to, to do fundraising or investment, uh, there's already a pre-arranged exit plan. Uh, what that means is actually company, the issuer, already commit to redeem back uh, within a certain period of time with a certain target profit uh, that, that, that have been planned for. 
what does this do for the investor is that it can give a bit of a target or rather a, a security in terms of how long are you going to be with this company? What kind of returns are you looking at? Um, and, 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 and I guess this could, could play to the investor's hand of forecasting uh, in terms of the, 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 the growth or, or, or profitability. Secondly, it's actually what we can call the RD shares, uh, the alternative ordinary shares. What that means is it's perpetual. So while the earlier one, there's actually a target plan. Um, for this one, there's no pre-arranged exit plan. Uh, well, <laughs> this does not mean that an investor cannot exit, but what it does is actually it gives um, a leeway for the businesses or the investors to actually share the risk and rewards over a perpetual time, a, a long, a long term, basically. Um, and 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 I guess along the way, you know, you you can still negotiate whether to exit or pretty much to buy, or if you're an uh, issuer, to buy it back. Uh, or if investors, you want to pretty much um, cash out. So, so, so the the key differentiator here is actually the the earlier one. Um, uh, the the one just now is actually have a target uh, exit plan, whereas this one is perpetual. Um, uh, both you can still have exit plan, but this one is just pretty much in the concept of continuity. Um, so yeah, just to reemphasize, uh, from from Etsy's standpoint, being a Sharia compliant, we can't do preference share. Uh, these are the two common mechanisms that we worked out when we speak about uh, equity crowdfunding uh, or deal curation. Okay, I'm towards the end. Um, I assume all of you would already know this, but if you're not, and, and this is something that, that we always preach and, and re-emphasize over and over again, is that uh, these four elements, um, how do you actually attract investors to your campaign if you are a business owner. Uh, secondly, if you are an investor, it's what you are actually supposed to look at, right? Uh, obviously, the first key one is with regards to the gross potential or revenue stream. When you fundraise, when you crowdfund, um, these are only the two lens that, that you, you need to consider. Uh, you either invest on the revenue stream uh, that gives you income over time, or you invest on the potential, which is pretty much the growth. Um, so, so you, one way or another, you have to demonstrate this, um, to the investors so that the investors uh, are able to understand and, and then invest. Um, secondly, obviously, this is a bit more tactical in terms of the dividend structure. Um, how do you want to appeal to the investors and, and what is the lucrative or rather the sweet spot for businesses to, to, to give equity up and, and then for, for the investors to, to buy? So this is pretty much common risk and rewards, basically. The, 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 the two that is a bit more specific to this, and we also emphasize on this one, and this is just because um, the common pool of investors that we have, Alhamdulillah, so far, I didn't illustrate this earlier, but, but just to share a bit, uh, we have a demographic of investors, not just in Malaysia, uh, although our issuer, our businesses, the startup, micro SMEs are in Malaysia, but our investors reside in the different parts of the world. Um, Singapore being one of the larger pool of investors that we have. We have also Europeans, uh, predominantly UK, who also invest in Southeast Asia and, and Malaysia. Uh, and, and the third large segment is actually the Middle East. So, so, so a lot of these investors, aside from the profitability, you know, money, the values per se, they also consider the fact of uh, the social impact. Social impact here, you know, it could be in the form of environment, employability, uh, you know, uh, inclusivity and, and stuff like that. And, and this is why we, we, we also have that investment committee in place before we push to the uh, public campaign because all of these things beyond the dividends, beyond the profitability are also looked into consideration before we go to public uh, because we want to make sure and, and again, that is our pillar uh, when we speak about impactful, sustainable projects and campaign. Uh, uh, we are advocating that for the purpose of our issuer uh, and also investors. Um, and, and this is what I mentioned about, about the redemption period, conditions, uh, you know, what kind of structuring, target plan, exit strategy. Um, this is also uh, uh, equally as important with, with the other fourth. Okay, I'm towards the end. Um, and, 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 and if you ask, you know, why at least if you want to know more, 
um, how do we differentiate ourselves uh, with others beyond the equity crowdfunding space? You know, first and foremost, we are Sharia compliant. Uh, secondly, I've mentioned about the social impact and, and why the focus on social impact. Uh, a lot of our investors also beyond profitability. Um, this, this concept of Amal Jaria beyond donation, uh, you know, amplifying, multiplying uh, good. Or I know if you recognize my uh, hashtag behind that, it's, it's circulate good. It's, it's around that ethos of, 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 of multiplying or amplifying impact. And, and obviously about the global network. Uh, you know, it's not just Malaysia. Uh, our projects also in Indonesia, but also we have a lot of investors or demographic, uh, of sorry, from various demographic uh, around the world. All right, so I'm towards the end. Um, this is something that I'm just, just want to quickly to share. Uh, if you are a business owner, I'm not too sure if, if there's a lot of business owners in here and looking to fundraise. We are actually launching a, a strategic initiative program. Uh, it's pretty much an accelerator. Uh, we call it IFAD, the Impact Fundraise Accelerator Track. Uh, we are launching soon. Um, if you are interested, uh, you can register your interest here. Uh, you can go to, to this, sorry, link bit.ly, uh, EM being Atheist Malaysia, uh, IFAD, Impact Fundraise Accelerator Track. track. So bit.ly forward slash uh, E-M-I-F-E-T. So over time, we'll give you more updates uh, and, 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 and inputs, what is this accelerator about? But fundamentally, it's about you know, making you aware if you're a business owner, uh, how do you want to fundraise? How do you want to fundraise equitably and, and fair? Uh, and then also we put you, I guess we coach you to some extent before you go to, to, to the public uh, fundraising. So this is, if this is something that, that you want to pursue or explore, uh, I encourage you to, to go to, to, or rather to register to this link. Ah, okay, sorry, I got a slide. So, so, so what does that accelerator looks like? It's pretty much, uh, we're looking for about 30 SME startups who are looking to fundraise. Uh, and this is what we mean by capacity build or groom you before you go to the ECF uh, fundraising campaign. Um, and, and I guess, again, this is this is this is the the, the link. Um, if you're looking to uh, explore fundraising with equi uh, with with ethics through ECF uh, fundraising, I encourage you to to register your interest. Otherwise, if you want to be or rather you're an investors and and trying to explore the crowdfunding, um, I'll encourage you to register uh, here. It's Ifin EM. Uh, actually, it stands for Ethics Impact uh, Fundraise. I can't remember Investment Network. Yes, Ethics Malaysia or something like that. So, so, so over time, uh, we'll 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 give you more updates about our projects, our inputs, uh, what's coming up, uh, webinars like these, community engagements uh, that we can actually get you on board. Um, these are our social media platform. We do from time to time update um, our social media Ethics Malaysia. Um, and to know more, uh, visit our website at his.co forward slash my. And if you have specific inquiries, just go to equity at, um, at his .co. Yeah, I'm almost towards the end. Um, I'll just share a bit um, on our actual platform just to, to give you a bit of a look and feel how does that... Um, look like in 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 a uh, real uh platform situation okay sorry i hope you can see my my browser basically so so this is our website the ethics.co forward slash my um you can find all the details here i'll just zoom in some of the campaigns that that, that have gone public or coming soon uh, we got one in renewable energy. Uh, there's two coming soon in the agriculture sector. And, and if you are investors, this is where you can, I guess, know more about the campaign. Uh, what is it about? What's the trajectory plan? Um, who are the business owners and what they are looking to do? And there's a lot more information that you can see uh, for, for, for you to make a decision making in terms of investment uh, opportunities or otherwise. Um, if you are a business owner and you're looking to fundraise for your business, 
Um, I've spoken about this, but this is a bit more very specific in terms of what are the criteria. Um, and, and these are pretty much the, the, the steps that we're looking into for you to be part of the public campaign. And you can go through all of these, there's some FAQs. And if you are ready, uh, you just type, sorry, you just click sign now, sign in now, and, and we capture your information and our investment team will, will have a further discussion uh, with you on, on, on that front. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Uh, thank you so much of, 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 of uh, listening to me for the <laughs> last 40 minutes or so. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to take any questions that you have now uh, for the next 10 minutes or so, inshallah. So I'll pass back to Ila to, to help me moderate. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Desirik, for that very educational presentation. Uh, so now we will take some time uh, to... Okay, so now we will proceed with the Q&A session. Um, so, okay, I will... Okay, so we have a lot on, on, on Slido uh, at the moment. <laughs> so, okay, the first question is, um, how much minimum capital needed to get started in crowdfunding? Um, good question. So, so, depending on how you look at, um, so, uh, and, 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 and to be honest with you, there's no minimum or ceiling price, so to speak. Um, but, but again, it is pretty much the question of what are you looking to do of fundraising? Like, now, I know what, what I mentioned, you know, you can actually fundraise up to 20 million, but if you're just a startup, uh, who are just started, for example, it doesn't make sense for you to to raise up to 20 million uh, because the portion that you need to consider if you're an investor uh, is that the valuation of your company. And, and, and based on that evaluation, it's actually how much equity you can give out for the investment that you're looking at. So in answering your question, it really depends at, at this point of time, what are you doing with your businesses? How much money you're looking for the businesses? Um, to to fundraise and obviously the technicalities of SE you can't have you know capital of ten millions of sorts mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry more than ten million uh, of, of of the regulation but but below that it is really up to the businesses and and that is also just to ensure investors have security for your businesses okay okay the next question is what is the percentage of fee that you charge the startups who want to raise funds on your platform. Yeah, so that's a good question. And then I could speak uh, broadly and maybe on, on behalf of other RMO also. Uh, typically, the market rate is between 6 to 10%, uh, depending on, and this is based on the successful raise amount, uh, and depending on how much effort uh, that, that, that is required for, 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 for operator like us to, to do a campaign. What I mean by that is actually, you know, if we need to help, curate advice before we go to campaign and, and, and also the quantum and all, all of that consideration, then only we, 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 we come to an agreement or landing in terms of that uh, range between 6 to 10. Uh, I also believe that uh, a lot of our peers uh, in the RMO also are, are looking into that market rate of 6 to 10%. Okay. Um, okay, so a question from Victor. Can you share your plan and roadmap in the next two years from at this in terms of ECF products? Okay, uh, good question. So I so ECF to be honest with you, you know, like I've mentioned in the SC is is also a good friend of us in terms of ecosystem building. Um, when we speak about ECF, it's never a case of only SCs. It's also in consideration of other market operators but also in consideration of the landscape. Uh, landscape here being the, 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 the investor's pool and the business pool that we're looking at. And, and why I say that is actually, you know, initially when, when SE started with the 5 million ceiling, um, traditionally the startups who are looking to fundraise uh, is, is the one that pulled into crowdfunding. Now, what we have seen is actually because we have gone up to 20 million uh, in terms of fundraising, you'll see a more or rather a new entrant from the medium enterprises uh, who are looking to fundraise to crowdfunding. Uh, and, and this could be for many reasons, right? If they're, they're looking to do IPO, for example, right? So, so fundraising valuation through crowdfunding could, could tee the, the micro enterprises, sorry, medium enterprises to go to IPO, right? 
So in answering your question, I can't say for sure in terms of what would be the the, the strategy, but but in terms of what I've mentioned earlier, we we probably will still focus on the four verticals: the agriculture, the property, um, the micro, small, medium enterprises. That is a bit more tech driven. Uh, I guess that's a lot of potential there, and that's what our investors are uh, resonate with. And and the fourth one is with regards to what I'm saying: the circulating or amplifying good lah, from the donors, the donation to financing. How do we bridge them and and, and amplifying good? So that's probably another product innovation that we are looking at over the next couple of two years. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So Azwina is asking, uh, an ECF uh, as an ECF operator. How have you fared during the pandemic, and how have you helped vulnerable segments of society via ECF? Yeah, that's an interesting point of view. So, and I guess it's what I was alluded to earlier with regards to security commission statistic of of the take up, the trajectory, and stuff like that. Um, as an ECF player, we see there's there's uh, there's a, a take up from the issuer, uh, micro businesses, and I guess I could. Resonate with with what's happening in 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 the current period of lockdown and 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 stuff like that. Right? A lot of businesses are struggling. The micro small business enterprises, obviously, getting funding through conventional banks and stuff like that is also getting a bit more harder. Um, um, so alternative financing as crowdfunding, whether it's P two P equity or, or charity, for it becomes a bit more uh, mainstream in that sense. So, so, so you see a, a confluence of of this ecosystem. Sorry, players or business owners are looking into crowdfunding. So, on on that note, it's it's growing. What you see in the in the investors pool is that they are also open to 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 invest or diversify their portfolio, lah. This may not be the case for PEs and VCs, the accredited ones, but uh, angel investors and retail investors are able to to pick up lah. And 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 this is where I'm coming back to the second point in terms of the impact, right? Um, and this also resonates back back to the 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 the, the current pool of investors that we have. Um, they might you know invest small amount, big amount. But the considerations of employability, for example, uh, the considerations of in the case of uh, agriculture farmers, uh, you know, uh, how do we make sure they are employable over time? Harvesting periods coming soon, end of the year with the lockdown, for example. These these type of things are, are a part of the mindset of our investors also, and and we cognizant of that fact. So so as much as we can, you know, aside from just being a a, a platform provider, so to speak. We do dabble into the insights also, lah, like, just to make sure that the the value proposition for our investors mm-hmm. and also issuers are uh, connecting. Uh, we don't have a, a I can't share the the data points as of yet because it's still brewing as we're growing along with with you know the the pandemic, the the lockdown period, and and, and stuff like that. Uh, hopefully, inshallah, by next year I'll be able to share like how we do the social financing in Indonesia of of that thirty nine thousand people that that we have managed to support. Uh, to give them roofs and you know shelter uh, through 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 crowdfunding uh, in Indonesia. So I hope we can emulate that in Malaysia, inshallah, next year. Um, is urban farming also in the agriculture investment plan? Uh, yes, and I would take a pinch of salt to that. Uh, in in terms of um, if I'm wearing an investor's hat, um, if you could infuse things around technology, uh, IOTs. Um, you know, data insights and stuff like that. I think that is a a, a lucrative market um, that that investors are looking at. So yeah, um, urban farming could potentially be that also uh, in consideration of scarcity of land. You know, uh, whatever that's happening at this point of time. So yeah, um, but take it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, and Tommy is asking any risk management plan to protect the crowdfunding investor. Yeah, we. Uh, I'm taking it on two fronts. Uh, as much as we could advise, uh, we don't have a crystal ball <laughs> uh, with us uh, to 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 forecast or or, or project uh, what's coming up in three years, five years, and stuff like that for that specific industry or portfolio. As best as what we could do as a platform provider, uh, we disclose as much as information for you as an investor to be able to make that informed decision. And and this is where we quite uh, and I guess security commission also is 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 quite particular about this with regards to transparency and 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 also 
uh, with regards to non misrepresentation to the, to the data that we put in the public uh, platforms. Okay, so uh, we only have uh, we can only answer one more question. Um, so the last question is from Victor: What's the average crowdfunding period before retail investors can redeem on their investment? Depending, um, sorry, uh, okay, I, I'll try to answer in two lines. If, if, if you're asking about the crowdfunding period, uh, like I've mentioned earlier, campaigns can go between two weeks to 90 days. So that's usually when a project or rather a businesses uh, are, are putting to public uh, for, for people to invest. So that's one. With regards to return, uh, this is actually, uh, and you can go to the to the to the website that I shared earlier, uh, mm -hmm. and you can see the 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 details of the project, and you can see what's the payback period and stuff like that. And this is very specific to the businesses. Uh, some can go to two years, some can go to five years. Some uh, target plans are defined, some are not. Uh, but I guess we we make that quite public and transparent again in the in the view of to make sure that you can make an informed uh, decision to invest or not. Uh, but typically, if you ask me now, it's usually between two to three years uh, for equity crowdfunding or equity uh, yeah fundraising. Okay, all right. Thank you, everyone, for all the questions um, that you have uh, submitted. Um, I know there's still more. Uh, if anyone has any more questions they'd like to ask uh, Mr. Dazurik, um, he shared uh, an email, the equity at ethis.co. So, yes, please feel free to email your, your questions to there if you have any other further um, if, uh, questions you want to ask. Thank you everyone for joining us for this session. Thank you, Mr. Dazwick, for speaking in our webinar. Um, don't forget, if you wish to watch this webinar again, we will upload the webinar on our YouTube channel in due course. Do check out our previous webinar sessions on our YouTube channel. I would also like to take this opportunity to remind everywhere to beware of clone firm scams. Frosters may use names, logos, and other details of a legitimate firm to promote bogus investment schemes via social media, promising extraordinary high returns with little risk. Also remember, never deposit your money into personal bank accounts. If you are unsure whether you're dealing with a licensed or registered entity and or individual, do not hesitate to contact the SC. So with that, I would like to say stay safe, stay at home, and if you need to be out, always maintain physical distancing. Hope to see everyone again at our next uh, webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Desiree. Thank you. Stay safe all. Take care.